In this video, we'll be adding a way to manage pages in the admin panel. Now I'll break this up into two sections. The first section will cover basic page management, which will be very similar to managing users. In the second part, we'll add a simple form of hierarchy to pages and we'll bring in a way to order pages using Ajax. But before we start, let's first add some inline comments to the user controller and the user model. That will help us if we need to make modifications later on. So let's start with the user controller. Here we fetch all users from the database and then we just load the view. Now it's always a good idea to comment your code. That will serve as your inline documentation. Now in real life, I would add dog blocks for every function as well, but we'll just stick with inline commenting for now. Now there's no need to comment the delete section. For login, we redirect the user if he's already logged in, and then we'll set the form and we'll process it. Finally, we'll load the view. For the callback function, we will not validate if the email already exists, unless it's the email for the currently updated user. Also, before we move on, let's create a helper function, because I hate to look at that hideous var dump output for debugging. Now, I'm not going to code it line by line, but instead, I'll just go to this page on GitHub, and you will find the URL in the comments section below this video. This is just one of my gists. Just copy that, open up the CMS helper, and paste it in. Now, let's go over it and see what it does. Well, basically, it does a var dump, and then it cleans the output buffer so it's not printed to the screen. And then it'll just add some styling and either echo or return it. And dump exit does exactly the same, only it will die after dumping. Okay, we're ready to create our page controller. Now, this will be very similar to the user controller, so I'm going to copy our user controller and name it page. Now, normally I'm not an advocate of copy and paste coding because it tends to lead to errors, but I'll take a shot for now. Okay, let's first clean up this page controller. Open it up and rename the class to page. Now, you can see it's full of references to user and users. We'll try and do some clever search and replace here. Search for user and replace with page. Okay, now let's clean this up. First off, we need to load the page model, and we'll do that in a constructor because we'll be needing it in almost every method anyway. Now let's have a look at the index method. By the looks of it, our search and replace worked out fine here, but there's just one thing. We are referencing a view file that doesn't exist yet. So let's fix that. Let's just head over to the views folder. Now when I look at the view folder for users, it strikes me that we'll need all these views for pages as well. So again, so again, I'll just copy this entire folder and name it page. That way, we'll have all the views available to us. Now let's check to see what we have in the browser. Just go to pages and, okay, well, there's your proof that copy pasting code leads to errors. There's something wrong in the CMS helper. Let's go and fix that. We'll just open it up again. And I'm sure you guys already noticed that I pasted in a redundant PHP tag. Let's just see if the rest is okay. Function exists, well, that looks okay. Let's just go back to the browser, reload that page. And yes, the error is gone. And of course, we now have huge errors in our view file because it's all referencing users there. Well, that was to be expected. So let's open it up and fix that. Go to views, admin, pages, and open up index. So let's start by replacing user with page again, like so. That already looks a little better. Now let's go over the code carefully to see where it needs adjustments. Okay, a capital P here. That link looks okay to me. Let's replace email with title. We're expecting pages, which is good. And then we'll loop through them and use page as a reference. Then we've got an edit link here, which is okay, but we don't need email, but we need title. And here is the edit button, and that's the delete button. And yeah, that looks fine. Let's just have a look in the browser, reload the page. There you go. Well, that went smooth. Next stop is editing a page. Let's go to the edit method. Okay, we're fetching a page, we're setting a new one. This is all correct. And here we are using a method that has not been coded into the page model yet. So let's open up that model and make our adjustments. 
Okay, let's just start at the top here. First, we'll check the class properties. And let's start by just deleting some properties that we are using default values for anyway. So we do not need to override them here. Now let's compare to our user model. So open that up. Okay, we'll need rules in our pages model too. So let's just copy this and paste it into our page model. Clean that up. Okay. And we'll also need to get new methods. So let's copy that and paste it to our page model as well. Okay, next let's set up these rules. Okay, we'll have a title with a name of title and that will be trimmed, required and access is cleaned. Also, we'll set its maximum length to 100. Now let's just copy that a couple of times. Next, we have the slug with a field name of slug and a label of slug. Now we'll also add validation of URL title. So it will be filtered with CodeIgniter's URL title function. Now this may seem odd, but you can use just about any function that takes a single parameter and returns something. I could, um, uh, I could add MD5 here and the post value would be hashed using MD5. Anyway, URL title should do just fine. And we'll also need a custom is unique rule, just much like we did with users. In the front end, we are going to fetch pages by their slug, so these slugs need to be unique. Okay, and then we'll have an order field with a label of order, and that should just be a natural number, so that should be zero or greater. And finally, we'll have body. It will have a field name of body and a label of body. Now this will contain HTML code, so we will not run it through XSS clean. And that's all. Now for the get new method, we will of course create a page object rather than a user object. And it will contain the same fields as we have in the rules. So there will be a title, a slug, order and body. And I think that'll be all for the model. So let's go back to the edit method in our page controller. There's still some things to be done there. Okay, we've got the new method covered. Uh, the name of the rules array is not rules admin, but just rules. Uh, we do not have a password rule, so let's just delete this line. Ah, yes, we need to pass different fields to the array from post method. That will be title, slug, order, and let's also add body. Let's see, there's the password again, and the rest seems fine. I'll tell you what, let's just not bother with order here at all. We'll deal with that when we get to the second video for pages. So I'll just go back and delete that everywhere. Just bear with me just a minute. Okay, now what about our view? We copied it from the user folder, so we need to make some major adjustments there. Let's just open it up. Let's first search and replace again. Okay, and now we'll go over the code. The first thing that springs to mind are these modal divs here. We don't need them. That's probably another copy paste glitch. Let's just get rid of them altogether. And while we're at it, let's just remove them from the user edit view also, because that's where we got them from in the first place. So let's just open that up and clean it up. So that's much better. Okay. This name should be a title and then we'll need to adjust the form as well. We have a title and a slug and the body. So this form input should be title and it should get its value from title as well. And the same goes for slug, which gets its value from slug. And we'll just copy this all together, paste it in like so. And then we'll make sure this one's called body and that it's set from body as well. And then of course we do not want body to be an input field, but we want it to be a text area. And last but not least, we do not want a confirmed password field. So let's just go over that one more time. Here's the title and that looks all right. We've got a form, we've got validation errors. We've got a title, we've got a slug, and we've got a body and we've got a submit button. That looks good. Let's just check that in the browser. Well, it looks fine to me. Let's just see what happens if we post an empty form. Well, we do get the proper errors and let's just see what happens if we use an existing slug for a new page. And that's not okay. And that's because we haven't coded the callback validation method, but we'll do that in a minute. So let's just see what happens if we try and edit a page, click on about, and yeah, that looks fine to me as well. So I guess we're ready to code the callback validation method now. So it's back to the page controller and let's see what else we have here. The delete function looks fine to me. A login method, we don't need it. Let's just delete that. Log out, we don't need it either. 
And here we have the unique email callback validation function. Now let's just rename that. Turn to our page model and let's see what it was called. It was called unique slug. So we'll copy that method name and just paste it in here and make sure we set the message to that proper method name as well. And now let's just refactor this method so that it'll work. We don't want to validate if the slug already exists unless it's the slug for the current page. The ID of the slug will be in the URI segment number four and let's just check that. One, two, three, four and that's good. So we'll set an extra where method where slug is equal to this input post slug. And that should all just work fine. If you're confused about what we're doing here, please revise the previous video because it's all explained in there. Let's just save this, go back to the browser and add a new page. We'll use an existing slug and now we should get an error message. And yes, we do. Slug should be unique. But then, if we are editing a page, if we leave this slug like this, we should not get an error message. And no, we don't. Very good. So let's do just one more test and add a page. We'll call it contact. It will have a slug of contact and we'll paste in some nice gibberish there. Save it. And yeah, that's been saved. So quite good. Now let's see if we can edit it. We'll call it contact two with a slug of contact two and we'll add in some different gibberish. Save that. And that seems to work just fine. Yeah, very good. Okay. Now I know there's just a little omission in our page model and that's the email index in the rules array and that should of course be title. Codeigniter's form validation doesn't require these keys to be set so it doesn't really matter but it's, you know it just looks better. Now the last thing we need to check is if we can also delete this page. So let's just click this. Yes we do. And it's been deleted just fine. Now wouldn't it be nice if we could offer our client a WYSIWYG editor. In other words a field with an HTML editor. Let's just bring one in. Now there's loads of editors out there and a lot of them are really quite good. I'm just gonna go with a random editor. Um, let's see, let's just do tiny MCE. Just Google for it and it will be at the top of the results list. So I'll just download the tarball that they have on offer. I've unpacked this, go into the JScripts folder and just copy the tiny MCE folder. And then we'll just bring it into our project. Let's see, public HTML, JavaScript folder and just paste that and there it is. Now I'll just go back into the examples folder and we'll just take full HTML here and I'm just going to copy the entire code here. That's all the JavaScript you need to implement TinyMCE. Now that needs to be placed inside of our admin's head and we do have a head view in components. So let's just open that up and paste it in. Now we need to make sure we're cleaning it up a little. First of all We'll just indent it. Then we need to alter the path to the script. So we're just going to take this, paste it in here. That was in folder JS and we don't need this. So now we're loading the tiny MC JavaScript and then we're initializing it. It has a mode of text areas. That means that it will take a text area and convert it into an HTML editor. Now we're going to leave this like it is. Well, we don't have a custom CSS file, so we'll just delete that. We don't have any drop down lists either. And we'll just altogether remove this redundant stuff. Now for TinyMCE to work, your text area needs to have a class of TinyMCE. So let's just fix that. We'll go to the edit view and then we'll just add class is TinyMCE. And that should work. So let's go back to the browser. And sure enough, there's our HTML editor. Well, it's got way too many buttons at the moment, but setting up TinyMC in detail is just outside of the scope of this video. And that's all for editing pages. Okay, we've covered quite some ground here. We've coded a way to create, edit, update and delete pages, including custom validation in just a few minutes. In the next video, we'll be adding hierarchy to pages. Stay tuned.